You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa attended yesterday the opening ceremony of the Louvre Abu Dhabi Museum being held on Sadiat Island. Upon arrival at the museum, His Majesty the King was welcomed by the UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Abu Dhabi Crown Prince and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Vice President of the Abu Dhabi Executive Council, Hazza bin Zayed Al Nahyan, and senior officials at the museum. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan welcomed the presence of His Majesty the King at the opening ceremony where His Majesty the King expressed his thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan for his invitation. Later, His Majesty the King and other dignitaries toured the museum that includes work of art and antiques that reflect the ancient and contemporary international human history. His Majesty was also briefed on a number of rare religious collections and manuscripts dating back to ancient civilizations. The museum included a collection of works borrowed from French museums, pieces of art collections, antiques and art pieces, including a gold bronze funeral mask from northern China and a two-year-old stone statue of the Jordanian Department of Antiquities called the Ain Ghazal statue. Also exhibit, exhibited is the axe blade in the National Museum, which dates back to 1600 BC, as well as the statue of Ramses II, the pharaoh of Egypt. His Majesty the King exchanged cordial talks with their Majesties, Excellencies, Highnesses, and Heads of State, participating in the opening ceremony on the relations linking Bahrain with their countries. His Majesty the King congratulated the UAE under the leadership of the UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, Vice President, Prime Minister, and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, and Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, on the inauguration of the museum, which became the first international museum of the Arab region and the Middle East. His Majesty stressed that this museum, inspired by Arab architectural culture, has become a new destination that reflects the UAE's approach to its cultural ties with various civilizations. His Majesty underlined the distinguished brotherly relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Arab Emirates and the advanced level of joint cooperation at all levels, especially in the fields of culture arts and museums. His Honor Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum and French President Emmanuel Macron addressed the grand opening ceremony. The orchestra instrumental ensemble played musical works from the international repertoire.
هي قبة كبيرة وأن الأرض تحتها مسطح به مرتفعات ثم جاءت الحضارة البابلية واعتقدوا كذلك أن الكون قبة كبيرة تسير فيها النجوم والكواكب ويحملها جبلان من الشرق والغرب واليوم تجمعنا في هذه المنطقة قبة جديدة قبة تقول للعالم بأننا نستطيع أن نلتقي ونتحاور ونتقارب أهلا بكم في قبة اللوفر أبو ظبي قبة النور في منطقة يحاول أصحاب الفكر الظلامي أن يرجعوا حضارتها إلى عصور الجهل والتخلف أحب أن أشكر الرجل الذي وقف خلف هذا المشروع وليدفع العالم حضاريا وثقافيا للأمام شكرا أخي محمد بزايد مشروعك يمثل جزء من إرث زايد الذي تحمله في قلبك إرث زايد في حب الإنسانية وخلق التقارب والتواصل بين البشر والحضارات من هنا نقول أن متحف اللوفر أبو ظبي سوف يمثل أجمل ما في الشرق وما في الغرب وسيكون وسيكون ملتقى لمحبي الفن والجمال والثقافة من كل أنحاء العالم شكرا لكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله Stepping into the Louvre Abu Dhabi, individual beams of light pass through the intricate roof to strike the surface and cast dancing reflections across the white walls. Looking back and toward the future, encompassing both east and west, is a theme that extends throughout the new museum. The modernist museum, designed by French architect Jean Nouvel, sits under a honeycomb dome of eight layers of Arab-style geometric shapes. So the idea was to create an Arabian agora. And uh, 
a place where you come, when you come back, when you talk about culture, about art, and not a box with, a, with an entrance and a classification. Jean-Luc Martinez, the president director of the Louvre in Paris, describes the museum as a bridge between Asia, Africa and Europe. It's not a European museum uh, and it's not the European point of view. It's the point, it's a place to see the world from Abu Dhabi. So uh, of course here we are a bridge uh, between Asia, Africa and Europe. So uh, this uh, meeting point here, this bridge, uh, it's very important to understand the world of today. The museum began acquiring works in 2009 and currently has more than 620 pieces and artifacts, including Leonardo da Vinci, Monet and Picasso. Only 235 from its own collection, however, are currently displayed. The rest of the pieces are on loan, with 300 artworks coming from 13 leading French museums. Deputy of His Majesty the King and Crown Prince, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, today attended the ceremony of the third annual Bahrain Award for Entrepreneurship, which celebrates the achievements of the kingdom's leading entrepreneurs. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of human capital as the most valuable resource to any economy, adding that it is through human creativity and innovation that nations such as Bahrain are able to create promising opportunities. He noted that Bahrain continues to invest in its citizens through educational initiatives, training, and wider programs designed to promote private sector growth, highlighting the government's commitment to supporting the creation of employment opportunities for all Bahrainis in line with the directives of His Majesty the King, which ensure that Bahraini citizens remain at the core of the kingdom's development. His Rohan has confirmed that all government initiatives are based on the principle of sustainability, competitiveness and fairness, which underpin Bahrain's Economic Vision 2030, noting that these initiatives are designed to accelerate growth in key strategic sectors through the creation of an attractive investment environment, which reinforces Bahrain's reputation as an entrepreneurship hub in the region, creates new jobs, and raises income per capita. He noted the important role played by startups and SMEs, further underlining the importance of the private sector as one of the main pillars supporting overall economic growth, saying that the economic challenges facing regional markets can be overcome by developing strategic public and private partnerships focused on stimulating non-oil sector growth, attracting investments and boosting local economies. Deputy of His Majesty the King honored the winners of the third edition of the Bahrain Award for Entrepreneurship, which are Aisha Mohammed Abdel Malik, Asia Jules for the Micro Enterprise of the Year Award, Faisal Rami Khalifa Solar One Co. WLL for the Startup of the Year Award, Mohammed Abdel Al All Food for Food Stuff for SME of the Year Award, Bedr Murad Bedr Models for the Enterprise of the Year with International Footprint Award, Sheikh Rashid bin Khalifa Al Khalifa Peninsula Dairy Farms for the Sustainability in Business Award, the late Yusuf bin Ahmed Kano, founder of the Yusuf bin Ahmed Kano Group of Companies for the Lifetime Achievement Award, and Dr. Rana Ali Al Amadi, Rana's Aesthetic Health Center for the Female Entrepreneur of the Year. His Rohan has expressed pride in the achievements and determination of Bahraini entrepreneurs. He highlighted that initiatives such as the annual Bahrain Award for Entrepreneurship are vital to the kingdom's development, highlighting the importance of supporting such programs. Chairman of Tamkeen, Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, thanked His Royal Highness for his patronage and continued support towards the Bahrain Award for Entrepreneurship. He added that since its launch, Tamkeen has committed itself to positioning the private sector as a key driver of the kingdom's kingdom's economic vision by providing a full range of services to individuals and companies. He noted that one of Temkin's primary objectives is to create and incubate an environment that provides the necessary tools for the growth and prosperity of local enterprises. He highlighted Temkin's continued commitment to providing monetary support as well as, as well as consultative programs and initiatives to institutions and startups to help them meet international standards. He noted that Temkin further supports companies by purchasing equipment and machinery, providing design services and marketing materials and by giving them the opportunity to participate in exhibitions.
The Bahrain Award for Entrepreneurship, which is as always supported by Tim Keen in cooperation with several esteemed organizations such as the EDB, the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, the BDB, Bahrain Chamber of Industry and Commerce, as well as Tim Keen's Knowledge Advisors and the UNIDO, all together to support local Bahraini entrepreneurs that have achieved their dreams and are paving the way for future winners. I mean, it's truly an honor today to be recognized and to win this award with all these amazing nominees that are all, I mean, driven in their field. And we're, we're all driven in our field to better Bahrain in every aspect we can. Our goals is to strengthen the food security of the Kingdom of Bahrain. And, and we are achieving that slowly and we will continue to achieve it. Every day we go into supermarkets and we make decisions. And I uh, urge people to think about those decisions and the one BD that they think about spending, they look into an, uh, if there is an alternative that is local. Um, a local product years ago had a negative connotation, but today a local product means fresh, it means healthy, it means it, it was harvested yesterday and on your plate today, and all those things are a positive thing. The award, since its inception, has focused on the development of private businesses for its role and contributions to the growth of the kingdom's economic vision. To receive an uh, award uh, given to us by the Crown Prince, uh, Prince is something, you know, uh, it, 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 you feel you have achieved something after 20 years. I've been in this business for 20 years. I have a lot of talents and they have a hobby. I want them to look at my story and to develop their story. They can make something out of it. Who could believe that one day my these toys, little toys that I used to collect, it will achieve, and you know, to this level after, you know, it, because it's all... It came after hard work. Tim Keen is a force that is greatly respected and depended on by young entrepreneurs that aim to accomplish their dreams by improving the services and products provided to Bahraini citizens and residents, and in some cases to the whole world. I'm sure, like all the young Bahraini, not just me, will will try their best to enter the market and do some stuff differently, and put themselves on the map and put Bahrain on the map of uh, really successful entrepreneurs. To be honest, we're lucky in Bahrain to have Temkin. I'm telling every young Bahraini entrepreneur that uh, you have a great chance. Um, Temkin helps with all kinds of schemes of different stuff, um, and they should get use of it. In other countries, they wouldn't have such a, such a help, you know what I mean? This award is an opportunity for every ambitious person to strive for greatness for themselves and for our kingdom. I'm proud today to get this award. It really means a lot to me and uh, meaning all the efforts I have done is not gone for waste. I, my advice is just for everybody who believes in themselves that to go for it and if your aim and intention is good, you will definitely reach your goal. This is Sarah Lebrek reporting for Bahrain International. The personal representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Spring Council for Youth and Sports and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, will participate in the Dubai International Triathlon Championship, which will be held on Friday. The championship is an extension of Dubai's interest in the sport of triathlons, which is very popular, where the Dubai International Triathlon Championship last year gained a huge success with the participation of professional athletes. The Dubai Triathlon Organizing Committee has set the distances of the race as follows, swimming 1.5 kilometers, cycling for 80 kilometers and running for 10 kilometers and the medals his Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa stated that this participation in the Dubai Triathlon is part of the special program to participate in the Bahrain Challenge in which he hopes to achieve a positive result that will help him in future participation especially with the participation of a large number of professional players in the tournament. He added that the Dubai Triathlon is one of the races where participants emphasize the strength of competition to achieve advanced positions pointing to the importance of participation in the international race which will contribute to Bahrain's presence in the Grand Sport Forum and enhance the the achievements of Bahrain's triathlon sports in the past years. Azana Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa stressed that the race will not be easy for everyone. In light of the presence of the huge number of participants who have great experience in physical strength and high technical fitness, His Highness added that the pre-tournament training went according to the technical plan, affirming that he is fully prepared to participate in the race and look forward to an advanced position. His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa trained for a short distance at sea with the team members.
Deputy Interior Minister Sheikh Talal bin Mohammed Al Khalifa chaired the delegation of the Kingdom of Bahrain at the Conference of the States Parties, the COSP, of the United Nations Convention Against Corruption in Vienna. Sheikh Talal bin Mohammed delivered a speech in which he asserted the dedication of Bahrain towards economic growth, justice, and fight all forms of corruption in the community. Thus, it launched the Comprehensive Economic Vision 2030, which focused on three principles sustainability, justice, and competitiveness. He said the national anti corruption strategy, based on those principles, to coordinate efforts to reinforce transparency and integrity and work to associate society in limiting corruption practices to safeguard public money and the creation of a secure environment to back the journey of comprehensive development. He highlighted Bahrain's dedication to carry the commitments of international treaties and cooperate with bilateral, regional and international parties to implement anti-corruption related agreements. The governor of the Southern Governorate, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali Al Khalifa, stressed his keenness to follow up on preparations made by the Southern Governorate in cooperation with the Southern Governorate Police Directorate, the Southern Region Municipality and other related authorities to provide and facilitate the best services during the camping season to achieve the security and safety to campers. His Highness also urged the campers to abide by the conditions and controls set by the Southern Governorate, which are primarily designed for the safety of their lives and properties. He pointed out that he will not take actions that lead to confusion and organization chaos as a result of non-compliance with the registration process or contrary to the particular location. The Governor of the Southern Governorate praised the efforts of the Southern Governorate Police Directorate and the Southern Region Municipality to cooperate and coordinate with the Governorate in the development of the security plan for the season. During his visit, the Governor of the Southern Governorate was briefed on the general plan of the camping in addition to accompanying programs and activities. His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali Al Khalifa highlighted the importance of the partnership to serve the objectives of all parties. Then the Governor of the Southern Governorate visited the Camping Services Center where he was briefed on the progress of the registration process and other related services provided by the Center for the Campers. The Governor of the Southern Governorate directed the centers to do more to facilitate and provide all the comforts and leisure to the campers.
CEO of Bahrain's Labor Market Regulatory Authority, LMRA, and chairman of the National Committee for Combating Trafficking in Persons, Osama al absi participated in the ESCAP Regional Preparatory Meeting for a Global Compact on Migration held in Bangkok. The event was organized by the UN Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific. Bahrain was invited to participate in the event following the introduction of the Flexible Work Permit, the FWP, a groundbreaking new program in the region designed to boost the kingdom's private sector while ensuring concrete protections for expatriate workers in the kingdom. The FWP will enable expatriates who meet certain conditions to work and reside in the kingdom of Bahrain without a sponsor in any job, full or part-time, and with more than one employer for a renewable two-year period. al absi highlighted Bahrain's commitment to international practices that facilitate opportunities for businesses and workers in equal measures. He noted that international collaboration is central to the development of innovative labor market practices, highlighting that the UN has cited Bahrain's FWP as one of a number of successful international programs which informed the Global Compact on Migration to be adopted following the 2018 International Migration Conference. He stressed that international recognition of the FWP reflects Bahrain's long-standing commitment to increasing its international and regional competitiveness through modern and effective regulatory frameworks. He said LMRA will continue to work hard to safeguard the rights of expatriate workers in the kingdom and to strengthen partnerships with international organizations. The CEO of Bahrain's National Health Regulatory Authority, NHRA, Dr. Maryam Al-Jalahma, today announced that 14 medical facilities across Bahrain have been granted permission to conduct medical health checkups for expatriate workers seeking employment in the kingdom. Dr. Al-Jalahma also outlined a range of requirements that medical facilities must meet in order to qualify for the service. The standards cover different operational and administrative aspects, including inspection facilities, laboratories, and high-tech medical devices and x-ray machines. From a technical aspect, CEO Al-Jalahma also highlighted that the private medical facilities will utilize an integrated electronic system to transfer medical results and data directly to the Ministry of Health. This will allow the Ministry to process applications swiftly while improving coordination with the Labor Market Regulatory Authority, the LMRA, the entity responsible for issuing residency permits in the Kingdom. Jalahma spoke of ongoing coordination amongst various government departments as part of the preparatory work for the new system. She stressed that new measures concerning expatriate health checks will reduce the waiting time to receive an appointment from three months to just one week. The time frame currently required to issue a medical certificate will also be reduced from one month to one week following the completion of the health checks. Two types of service for expatriate health checks at licensed private medical facilities. Standard service under the service appointments are given based on the availability across the approved private medical facility. The service costs 20 Bahraini dinars. Premium service an employer is allowed to choose from a wide range of private medical facilities. It includes medical services and other services such as transportation and customer care assistance. The cost is subject to the standard rate of the medical facility service provider. The full list of private medical facilities will be announced soon on the web portals of the e-government, the LMRA, and the Ministry of Health. And before I end the news, here is a reminder for our top stories. His Majesty the King attends the opening ceremony of the Louvre Abu Dhabi Museum held on Sadiat Island. And Deputy of His Majesty the King and Crown Prince honors the winners of the third annual Bahrain Award for Entrepreneurship, which celebrates the achievements of the kingdom's leading entrepreneurs. That's all from Bahrain International's News Center for now. On behalf of the news team, have a good evening.